What it is, what it do, what's poppin'? It's your boy Marquis Q Sav. Hey, what's good with you? It's Ray Rashawn. People of God, this passes is Rory McLean. And it's your boy Easy E, also known today as Heartbreak Drake. Oh, yeah. shit. <laughs> just today or is just that today? Just today is a special day. Oh, oh, I hear you. Okay. And we are back with another rendition of the episode, another dance of the Way to A podcast coming to you live from the Heartbreak Hotel. Yes, sir. Hey, it's a very special episode, isn't it, today, fellas? Very special sure episode. Is. People, neighborhood, we are celebrating our 1,000 listening episode. It's going to give it a round of applause. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. We got some uh, air. What we got over here, man? What we got? Got that Andre. Oh, the shoot. accent over the E, Andre. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. <laughs> Champagne's finest. A little bit of orange juice. Oh, oh. there's a little, a little bit more survivors. So okay. Casual, super casual vibe. Hey, let's, let's, let's toast up to the 1,000 listening. Let's toast up to the 1,000 listening. Absolutely. Got to. Oh, that was good. Why we touch the table like it was a <laughs> I don't know why we did that. Hey, did y'all boys feel like we were gonna get to this point this fast? Like, what we in six weeks, seven weeks in? I think we're six weeks, a thousand listens. Nah, no, definitely not. Six, six weeks of taking it serious. Yeah, 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 like because I don't know. I'm glad we're here though. Well, I'm, I'm, I definitely love the support we've been getting. All the feedback, it definitely helps for real, for real. What kind of feedback y'all been getting so far? I think people are just surprised. And how quality the content is, because like mm-hmm. it's one, and then how consistent we are with it. Yeah. I'm not trying to boost our own horn, but like obviously we're saying stuff that appeals to you guys, and you know, I'm glad that we're able to continue to do this. You know, what yeah. I'm saying like our conversations are worth listening to. <laughs> people just tell me like, "Oh, y'all still doing it?" Because I send them here's the next part. Like, they're like, "Oh, y'all still doing the podcast?" <laughs> you know, like, a lot of people just start stuff nowadays, you know, and then continue. quit with it. Yeah, absolutely. absolutely. That's another topic. Y'all stay consistent. So, a, lot, a lot of people been telling me that I'm like surprised at how like culture are to like you know really speak, speak about the stuff y'all been speaking about because a lot of people been telling me that the last podcast that they really like like mm-hmm. how Rashawn called Eric Corny and you know that's that's just something that you know the people are surprised that we're just that real with each other they thought it was going to be like some like little play play stuff but <laughs> everything well, I, I just want to go ahead and address that we did go outside that minute and shook hands <laughs> we, we made sure you were like Guys, guys, we that was just we, that was just some locker room talk. We were there, that was I don't know, like you give the people the wrong yeah, idea. Yeah, right yeah, now, yeah, like, yeah. That wasn't really that. Like, like, so was, why'd you call him corny? Like the people yeah. want to know why'd you call him corny? I mean, yeah, I was just I was just being funny in the moment. I wasn't. Yeah, I wasn't actually. Was I wasn't actually because nah, he didn't even explain himself. That's why <laughs> so we just apologize. Eric, I apologize. I mean, <laughs> no, nah, I mean, we went outside. We shook hands. Like, yeah, oh, we, we talked. I mean, we it's handled now. Okay. We're just letting the people. We just letting the people know that. Like, that y'all good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. A lot of people didn't think y'all was good. Come on, man. We good. See, that's we were, we were, me and Aaron had us in seventh grade. Yeah, it's awesome. Man, had a strong? Williams Middle ah, School. Shoot. Come on now. Hey, I hear you. Williams Middle School. That's what That's what. That's what. And we said we started this? Come on now. Y'all yeah, done definitely not start this. What can you say? I mean, we laid the groundwork. <laughs> <laughs> but on this episode, we're going to talk about a lot of good stuff. Um... I know a lot of people have been hyped about this new trade that's dropping. How y'all boys feel about this new trade that's dropping? Plug. Needed. Come on, man. He, Drake doesn't miss. I don't know what else to say. He's a lot of like, people thought he did on this tape. <laughs> a lot of people don't listen either. <laughs> you know, that, that, that goes back to that conversation, but you know. I think people need to understand this isn't some, you know, when we expect Drake, we expect masterpieces, some collective idea, cohesive thought, and stuff like that, but. These are leaked singles. Leaked singles have been out for a long time at that. Facts. And I just feel like, why not capitalize it? Go ahead. And like you said, Q, get it out of the way. Mm-hmm. And when the summer comes, we got all, all these other bops to listen to. Right. New stuff. So as a piece of body work as a collective, like, how do you think it was like out of 10? You know, you know we got to give our rates out of 10. Like, what's that out of 10? I'm giving it an 8. An 8? 8 out of 10. Oh, Old like and new or just like the piece in like general? Like, you got to count it all as one all, project, as technically. All project. That's what you got to count as one project. And that, like, with When to Say When, mm-hmm. Chicago Freestyle. I'm glad he can give you on his credit, too. That's, that's what I'm saying. That's big for him. Yeah, facts. And, like, I know a lot of people don't like Tootsie Slide, but at the end of the day, Drake made music that grows on you. Fact, like, yeah. at the end of the day, whenever we get out of quarantine, <laughs> when Tootsie Slide come on in the club. Everybody going to be riding to it. It's going gonna, it's gonna to jump. Like, I don't know what else to say. I think it's a good cookout song. Absolutely. Yeah. Speaking of cookouts, do we have a cookout coming up soon? See, we got so many plans for the people. We got so many plans, bro. Don't uh, don't think that this episode is just about us. This is definitely an episode about y'all. So at the end, wow. of it, we got a little surprise for y'all at the end. Wow, yes, sir. So, yeah. so uh, what y'all boys been up to, man? Like, you know, uh, they supposed to be opening up the states um next weekend. That boys going outside. <laughs> I'm going outside to get a barber or a haircut. And I probably come back in. I don't know. I think I'm gonna try to test the waters. I'm gonna see how that that first wave, the first week, people do. Oh, see yeah. where the numbers lie, and they'll let me know if I need to go outside or not. <laughs> Can't really risk it. 
Bro, I know Florence on. Um, they were on Magnolia Mall not too long ago. <laughs> For real? Yeah. They, they still have a graduation at Florence. They are? Yeah. I heard schools back in uh, Georgia, they're open back up too. Like the um, public schools and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. Yeah, Georgia really wild. If you think yeah. about it. They're becoming the new Florida. They, they also said like, they weren't going to let people test for driver's license. Yeah, they said parents sign off or something yeah, like that. Like, yeah. They definitely should not do that. In Georgia? No. no. Oh, maybe some We got state. Atlanta, bro. Maybe, black, bro. Atlanta's like the black people sanctuary, bro. And that's who I was getting from, bro. They say 80% of the black is black. I mean, it's really Georgia trying to follow up behind Florida. <laughs> yeah. That's honestly what it is. Because everybody knows Florida people crazy. Yeah. If you ever met somebody crazy, they're either from Florida or New York. That's it. <laughs> why New York? Yeah, why New York? New York, New York City. They don't they don't not, the <laughs> not the state. New York City. You're from New York City and all of Florida, no matter what city. <laughs> the city don't matter in Florida. Everybody knows. Everybody knows. Everybody yeah, right. So do you think this is a good move for the states to open back up? No. Absolutely not. So when is it a good move for the states to open back up? When Corona's cured, honestly. Or they got some sort of vaccine or something. I say August. August. By August, I mean, that's so, August so that people do what they're supposed to be doing, like yeah. wearing masks six feet apart, social yeah. distancing. Right. If they're not going to do that, then this state, we're just going to fall into another wave. This says uh, it's supposed to hit another like curve or something like that again in the fall. Yeah, I believe it. So take care of yourself, people. Do you think the school is going to go back virtual being in the next fall? Absolutely. Probably so, bro. Like, it's, I hate to say that, but that's what it's looking like. I don't know. I believe in God. I mean, that's my last semester. Like, I'm, really, I'm, really I'm really trying to have a great time. I think it will be time. bad by then. You think it will be bad by then? I hope so. I don't think it will, to be honest with you. The only reason I say that is because that they're already like saying you can't socially gather until 2021. So like you can't socially gather until 2021. What do you mean they won't back, go back to school? You know what I mean? Exactly, bro. So, I mean, so what are the things that y'all boys been like like dealing with lately? You know, we had like Michael Jordan's like last dance documentary starting up lately. How y'all boys been feeling about that? It's tough. I like it. So much like insight and stuff like that. I feel like people really need to understand why people place Michael Jordan as the greatest player of all time. Like his dedication is. to the school. There's room for conversation there. What do you say? Q said Michael Jordan the greatest basketball he player. He definitely is the greatest basketball player. I mean, I think right now, yeah. Right now, yeah. Right now, but I mean, no, there's, there's different ways you can attack that. We're going to back to that, though. But as far as dissecting who he is, his mindset, and, like, how he handled the league and how the league basically tried to – like, Detroit, they really tried to stop him and hinder him from his success. But right. that really only made him a better player. Absolutely. Yeah. They, didn't know, they didn't do that to any other player except for Michael Jordan. That's why he's the greatest. Yeah. I mean, he's in that conversation. I'm, I'm a LeBron. I'm a big LeBron fan, so, like, you know, I always think, like, LeBron is up there. But if you look at the numbers – I mean, just by the numbers. Just by the numbers, strictly. Mm-hmm. Numbers don't lie. Like, like, but numbers this, don't always tell the truth. He went to two three peats. Two three peats. He never lost. Never lost in the finals. Never lost in the finals. LeBron been in the finals consistently for nine years uh-huh. and won three of them. So it's not fair. Though. I mean, I know it's not fair because you know it's not all about just like the player. It's yeah. like the team, like teammates, coaches, all of it goes into it, but. I say every finals he carried them there, regardless of what it is. But, I mean, it's it's Michael Jordan's day. It's his documentary. I'm not trying to diminish it like I say Thomas out here. Absolutely. But I just feel like, <clears throat> for me, like seeing like Dennis Rodman, for example, yeah. his episode was crazy. Or Scott Dennis Rodman's crazy. <laughs> no, that's a fact. He just he was young thugs. Like that's who young thug looks up to. I feel hey, like. what did you tweet? Dennis Rodman. What did you tweet? The young other day? thug looks up. To what I say? I said I said Dennis he said, Rodman. Dennis Rodman Carl, so young thug could walk. <laughs> And I think somebody else retweeted that and said maybe uh, no Lil it? Wayne crawls or Thug can walk, but I feel like Thug is more like I no, I don't know because you got you got to be honest. You got to think about it. Back when all that was going on, Lil Wayne was like the first one to wear like the like he was wearing like cheetah print stuff and like. But Lil was, Wayne was the first rapper that people was kind of like, is he gay? But he didn't before I Thug. I feel like Thug embodied it in the like more more. More so yeah, absolutely, people. but that's why I say he crawled so thug. But I'm saying, but I'm saying people who have done what Dennis Rodman has done for him. Like I feel like Lenny Kravitz is someone that's kind of like out there. People are like, mm. like I think he got people like that. What do you call him, androgynous or something like that? I don't know what the word is. I just gonna say weird, but yeah, <laughs> just different. different. There you go. Did y'all watch the interview with Oprah that he did? But she kept asking if he was yeah, gay. Yeah, I saw that. He's like, no. Yeah, no, not about it. Yeah. He's like, have you? She's like, have you acted like, on it? No, no. He's like, who hasn't thought about it? She's like, what? <laughs> bro, Oprah really be like she, being the federal out here, yeah. bro. Her and Gail. Her and Gail. Yeah, I don't know Gail. 
Right. So um, I think it's really I think the documentary really showcased how big of an asshole Michael Jordan really is. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. There was that part where uh, Scotty was really trying to fight for his money, and Mike was calling him selfish because he should have been playing and sitting out some games. Well, Mike was being eighty hundred million dollars. Yeah. They, <laughs> what was it? Scotty was like the hundred and thirty third. Like what he was wasn't even the hundred highest paid pay player in the NBA. Yeah, yeah. But he was definitely top five. I feel like at that That's time. Horrible, and, bro. I don't know. Mike was like, Scotty, you really should have played. I'm like, so Mike. He, he was like, he wasn't going to do that. He wasn't going to give you the money. I just really felt like Scotty was being selfish. Like, Mike, come on. Like, the offense is ran through you. Like, yeah, you, can't even, you can't even talk to management to get Scotty an extra yeah, paycheck. Bro. Like, come on. People got to understand, Michael Jordan was just all about basketball. Like, he wasn't about politics. politics. He wasn't wow. about, like, he really wasn't about partying like that. Honestly, like, he really that was just really about basketball. Or win. That's what it was. That's Not just win, basketball. Yeah. Because it's just golf. He, yeah, he, he took off very seriously. He wanted to win. That's it. So, at what point does like being in love with the game like have that line between being an asshole to other people? Well, I think in someone like Michael Jordan, like where he stands and like what he means for other people, like you're idolized. Like people look up to you, and I feel like you kind of have like this unspoken uh, obligation. obligation, yeah, to make yourself that, like a love person, not just off like off the court and stuff like that. Yeah. And I don't feel like he really captured that or whatever. And that's why I feel like LeBron and his legacy and the things that he stands for and builds for, that's why I feel like he's like the GOAT, honestly. Because I feel like it's more than numbers at mm-hmm. the end of the day. But I don't even feel like I feel like on the standpoint of like him and Kobe, I feel like Kobe is as the same level as assholeness as being competitive like their drive for the game. But Kobe also reached back at the end of the day. Like Kobe yeah. mentored Kyrie, Kawhi, like, you know, that Mamba Academy, no joke. Yeah, that Mamba Academy was good. So, I mean, speaking off of like music and like all that other stuff, like I just want to talk about you know certain cornball that's in like our generation now. Did y'all boys see uh, the guy that tweeted the thing about um, oh, graduating I, law school? I am the prize. Yeah, I am the prize. That's my brother, boy. Sorry. Uh, Juan, speak on it. What do you say? What happened? Got, though? He basically got like his law degree, and then he got on Instagram, which is like he's the prize now. Like most women talk to men that have baby mama drama and have criminal records, and he was saying that he didn't have either or either one, so he was the prize. But a lot of people roasting him because he still didn't pass the bar yet. Like you still don't have a yes, yikes. Like you just have your degree. <laughs> I mean, but at the end of the day, like you had like I'm not gonna say he's making valid points, but he was like pulling up some statistics. He did. Like, he, his, he, had, he, had, he had the He did his homework. He was researching. He had numbers. Right. He was like one third. If you got the numbers, you got half the battle. <laughs> <laughs> you should have lost the battle. Everybody, you definitely lost. A lot of people dogging him for that. I mean, but like at one point, like I mean, is he right? Is he right? Like as far as like the stats he put up, or is he right? In fact, that, that you know, like he was making like valid points because he wasn't wrong. I guess. I just think like he been in school this long, and that's what you thought of for your your graduation post. You wrote a book on why women should you should be the prize for women. That's Most true. women talk to be with baby moms like you went too deep. Yeah, you have a. Is degree. that what drives you? You finished. <laughs> Undergrad and law school, and that's your and that's what passion got for your graduation <laughs> picture. That, that's something going on in his head. But no, no, but maybe maybe that drops him though. That shit. That he it expressed absolutely. it terrible. He expressed though. it really. It was terrible. Like, and I get the statistics. You beat the number, the five yeah. and stuff. But dog, he like, wrote paragraphs on Instagram as a caption. Bro, I just looked at it, bro. It was like, <laughs> yeah, it's a lot. It was deep, bro. Let's see if I can read a little. He got roasted a lot too. Sheesh. So, I man, how do you like? If you was his homeboy, like, what would you say to him? I'll also take that down. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, would, I would really try to figure out where he came Archive from. it and change the caption. So, Shit. Sean, what would you say? I know you probably. I know Bruno's really point. Uh, I'll just be honest. Like, I, just, I don't understand. Like Everything you do, I feel like you should do it for a certain reason to get a certain outcome. So I would be interested to know like what's the outcome. And you yeah. thought that that was one of the, mm-hmm. what he was going to get from that. Well, the no, he thought it was going to be girls would be like, Oh, He's you are the prize. Yeah. <laughs> like, is that what you thought I was going to happen? Well, I don't know. Like, I don't know. That's just I don't know. A weird. Thing. But people are motivated different like in like weird ways though. Like you know, some people are motivated by their family and stuff like that. Like other people are motivated by like being that envious person that everybody wants to be. I feel like that was just like you know his determining factor. Right. But people like it when it's something that just comes off of you. It's not like what yeah. you express and stuff like that. It's like your actions. Like, oh, he looks like he's one of a kind or she looks like she's one of a kind. She's different. But like, you're just telling us, then giving us numbers. And it's like, nobody wants to yeah. get attention to the truth like based one. They want to experience it for themselves. And first, and first of all, Instagram, like nobody's scrolling on Instagram to read that long of a caption, first of all. So if you wanted that to be an outcome, you would They shared it, so they must read it. You're in law school, you should write like an article or something, write a paper. 
That you're been educated. Like, yeah. You have two degrees. You're educated. Yeah. Like, no, like, so why are you even? Well, they're saying he didn't even go to a really good law school. Yeah, his acceptance rate too. was like sixty yeah. percent. Retention was even lower than guys. But guys, it's, it's guys. an HBCU, so we can argue. Yeah, can't bash each other. A law yes. degree is a law degree. <laughs> Relax. But he didn't pass the bar though either. Yeah. Well, when he passed the bar, then we have a conversation. Does he want to be a practicing attorney? We don't know. Well. So what's the, so what's the difference between like I know like Sean you're in the criminal justice field like what's the difference between like going to law school and passing the bar? I mean the, the bar is specifically just so you can practice law in a certain state or states. That's really right. what it's for. But some like some people go to law school would never have attention to to be an attorney. So mm-hmm. some people just go to law school just for like I know certain like sports agents or agents in like other fields they go to law school because they have to know like contract law or certain things like that. Mm-hmm. So. Maybe I mean I don't know if he wants to be an attorney. Like if he wants to be a lawyer, then okay. But I mean, you think that prevented him from like pursuing like what he wants to do? No, nah, no. I think he still can make it. Somebody's like white firm, yeah. probably. Someone's white firm. Why are you assuming this? Like you really, somebody's white firm. You really yeah. defy the odds here, buddy. Like yeah. you stand out. Hey, you're just dis- dis- disregarding black people. We can, we can get behind yeah. that. Hey, I follow you. I think, but I think all the negative energy he got is from like us young people. I don't think like somebody in a law firm probably don't even know what he posts. They probably wouldn't even check his social media. Yeah. Mm-hmm. As long as he passed the bar, he'll be he'll get the job. If he passed the bar, yeah. yeah. As long as he feel like you're the prize, that's all that matters. Yeah. So okay. Yeah. That's what you think. But um, <laughs> going off of that, like, what do y'all boys like think about him like disrespecting our black women, like our black queens? Like that's just something I just can't get behind. Yeah, I feel like we hate each other way too much, or like. Or black men don't appreciate black women, and like that might teeter off black men, women not caring for our black men. But like we're really all we got, and there's no one else is gonna feel or experience our struggle or our ancestors' struggles the way like a black person could. Like we were talking yesterday with some people, and I think someone was saying like I can't be with someone that you know can't say nigga like and know how deep it is and how like I mean a white person can say it, but that's disrespectful. I'm about to say they can't say it or they're not supposed to say it. You white people be saying it all the time. You know, but I need you to understand the significance behind it, like. Why I appreciate it when, or not appreciate it, but like when you say it, I'm not gonna get upset the same way the white person, and you can't do that with a white person, you know. That's mm-hmm. too much teaching. I feel like. Yeah, I, I definitely agree. I'm I'm in the, the, I'm in the boat where I I believe. Me personally, I'm not gonna be with a woman that doesn't understand my struggle. Mm-hmm. So, and if that's marriage, I'm not gonna marry. I can't see myself mar- marrying a white woman. Not saying nothing's against that. Not saying. Yeah. Like, you know, everybody loves who they love, but I just need my woman to be able to understand my struggle. So that's that's kind of why. So that's kind of how I look at it. It just kind of sucks that we have those kind of things in place because, um, you know, we, when I think about life, I have to think about, like, the reality of it, where your faith lies in and, like, the things that you're interested in. Like, those combine to make the evidence of life that you want to pursue and stuff like that. And, like, let's say that you really love somebody, but society says, no, y'all can't be together because of uh, what history happens and stuff like that. And it's just hard for people to really want to carve out and be that individual when you can't be that because each and every one of us as black men, we represent black men all together. We, like, we unify to represent that. So our actions, like, if you do something that isn't, like, uh, that is frowned upon, yeah. then it looks bad on all black people. And I feel like people don't realize that they carry that weight, and that's why, and even if they do realize it, they can't branch off and be individuals and love who they love because they're carrying that. Okay. So Sean, like going back to what you said about you'll never be able to like not being able to but like you prefer not to be outside your race. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. That, that's good verbiage. Good yeah, yeah verbiage. good verbiage. So um well if your son or your daughter, you know, whenever that is, well if they bring, you know, someone that's non black to your household as their boyfriend or significant other. See, uh first of all, how old are they? Let's start. They're old enough to date, old enough to marry. Old enough to be bring um, someone old enough to be bring someone to my house? Me me personally, uh well, first of all, if, if I feel like this, like, my son or daughter, I'm already, like, tell them or teach them certain things, like, why I feel this certain way. So, I feel like if they prefer to date outside their race, they're going to have different experiences than I did growing up. Right. So, their, like, background is kind of different than me. Like, they probably ain't never, well, not well, never, but a lot of people have went through life without being, like, being called the N-word. Yeah. Like, I can't say that. I found out what the N-word was when a little girl came over with the... Swing on our swing set when we were six years old. Mm-hmm. That's she called it N No, she she said her granddad didn't like her coming over to our house. And we was like, why? And she was like, because he said that y'all were N words. That's what she said. She said N words. And we were like, N words? What is that? How old were you? Man, we were probably like six or seven. 
We didn't know it was bad until we told our dad. No, we didn't know it was, I didn't know it was nothing bad. And I was just like, oh, okay. And then we just asked our parents about it, and they were just like, what? Like, it was so, the schoolhouse, like the old people say. Oh, no, he was across the street. He was, he was our neighbor. <laughs> oh, this is our neighbor. Yes, bro, he was our neighbor. It's like so. That's an, that's an experience I had that probably my son or daughter, we'll never future son or daughter, would like would never have. So, <clears throat> me personally, that's just in my opinion. Black women are the first divorced, the last married. Yeah. Like, in my opinion, we need to. Keep it in house. That's what, I mean, I mean, <laughs> I, just, I don't wrong. understand. I, there's nothing wrong with saying that because, like, I saw a statistic a long time ago. It said that black men married outside their race more than any other race on the planet. They see it. Like, think about that. Everybody else take care of their woman except for the black man. Why is that? But then we only get mad when we see the white man with the black woman. Absolutely. Like, like what are they doing? Sense. What are they doing? Like, what? Like, come on, bro. I mean, I feel like black people, like black men in general, look as like dating outside the race is like they're like leaving what they left behind to like achieve something greater. They feel like where they're at is not going to get them to where they need to go. Almost, it's almost like dating outside the race is good. Like it's like a status symbol. It's like a status symbol. Like, like, like buying Jordans. It's like getting Jordans. <laughs> that's the it's problem. like getting some Yeezys. But I mean, that's how like growing up. Well, not growing up before. It's like. Back in the days, all the movies show like you having a woman that look a certain way, or like the ideal trophy wife is like mm-hmm. a white woman with good hair, basically. Right, and no booty. So why do why do we why do you feel like black men like why why is that something that is instilled in us? Not in us, but like instilled in other black men. I'm not. That's not instilled in me. That is instilled in me. <laughs> I don't know. Like that's. I feel like it comes from us, not really like like really coming from nothing. Like, that's what not all black men come from nothing. I'm not saying that, but yeah. if you look at what success is, it's rarely a black person. You know that's what I'm saying? saying. And like, so if it's a white person, you see that white person with it's a white woman. Yeah. So they want things that's gonna, like you said, it's gonna make them feel like they're higher than what they really are. Mm-hmm. So dating outside your race, whether it be white or anybody, anybody that's just not who you are, your peoples, like it just feels like okay, like I'm doing something different, and different is it? Different gets me out of where I was. Yeah. So that's what I think, and it's, I feel like it's just kind of hard to change because. It's, if you look at our unfortunate world, like who's it rent by? You know what I'm saying? This is a white man's world. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So you really, unfortunately, you work with what you have and you finesse your way through there. And it's not that we can change it, but the only way that we make ourselves I feel better is if we learn how to appreciate yeah. our people. You know what I'm saying? Self-love. Exactly. I feel like that too. I feel like that, they always use this analogy, like black people are like a barrel of crab. Like we're not always, we're not trying to uplift each other, always trying to bring each other down. Mm-hmm. And I feel like in that sense that we feel that if we stay in that barrel, we're never going to get anywhere. But if we get outside that barrel, outside the hood, outside of our black women, then we're going to like reach success. We got to stop thinking like that. Yeah. We because think about think about the woman that was there for you. The one that was in the trenches with you. Yeah. When 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 you get out, they only you you know they ride or die because they was with you when you ain't had no money. They was with you before you was scoring touchdowns. You see what I'm saying? Like, but why is success measured as like something that's materialistic? Like, why do we feel like if I get a pair of Jordans, I'm making it? If I get a pair of Yeezys, because I'm we it. want to compare our success. Success yeah. for us is never an individual feat. We have yeah. to show it out. We have to put it on Instagram. We will, or it's like putting a picture out. You know what I'm saying? This is my success. Look at it. Give me my gravity. Give, give me my lights. Give me my glory and stuff like that. So we want other people to look at it and be like, oh, okay. Like, look what he's doing. Like, yeah. I want to do that. People like. They want people to aspire to and all that kind of stuff. And we just have to be happy with ourselves and recognize, for me, this mm-hmm. is what I wanted. Well, people go on social media and post a graduation photos. Like, isn't that the same thing? Same thing as, um... Like, this is my success. Like, shouldn't you look at it? Like, be, like, not envious, like, look at it as, like, a big accomplishment. Like, if we really didn't look at success by like, other people's, like, eyes, like, what they view, I think it would be on social media. Like, there would be no way to display your success if there was really, like, if we didn't look at success as being a materialistic thing. I mean, that's all it is, really. You want people to see you and see what you've done. Like, there's no innocent way around that. No one really posts for themselves. I mean, you post so other people can see it. That's how I feel about social media in regards to that. Juwan, Raven and McClam, you're the social media guru. Like, what do you feel about people posting on social media for clout, for success? So, like, make people see what they got to see. I don't know. I feel like when you, on a certain level, like, maturity... Now, I feel like we all started out on social media with like posting for other people. Or like some people still on that level. But I feel like sooner or later you kind of get like tired of that. Like sometimes you just post just to post. Like for me, sometimes I just post just because like I think I want to post this. Mm-hmm. Now I used to like, 
I like I used to, I gotta be honest, I used to be like, dang, I got a, a, a lot of likes on that. I don't know why. Like, I wonder why they didn't like that. What's the algorithm? But now, like, if the lights go down, I'm like, I like how I look in this fit, or I like this, so I'm gonna post it. Like, if it don't get a, little, a lot of likes, it's okay. Or, like, I remember when I was a freshman, these other guys were like, Juan, don't ever post twice in one day. Like, they had, like, all these rules. Yeah, why was there such guidelines? Don't post twice in one day, don't do this, your lights can go down, you gonna do this, and this. And someday I'll be like, dang. If I'm gonna post twice today, and I feel like both of them, I should look be able good, to do that. I'm gonna do it. <laughs> now the likes might not be good because you got two posts out, but still, yeah. like after a while, you just be like, dang, I just want this to be on my page. But I like how it looks. So where does Finsta come from? I know you have a Finsta like. What oh, is Finsta the- is just like you letting loose, like <laughs> let loose, let loose. Just post whatever you want to post without like Your the normal like it. everybody else being on the air. Okay, so, so like you don't have no like. Well, you're not supposed to have like no family. Members. <laughs> like, or like certain people that you think like dang they might think of me a certain way if I, I, they see this so yeah. like, that's kind of what fits come work I mean, you can just post whatever you want to post and everybody else it's supposed to be everybody else's fits this too so like it's like everybody you so still, everybody should have a you basically see the real real kind of now this is the thing they say well we say fits that is fake Instagram and then mm-hmm. we say rinse that is like the real Instagram but really the fits that is your real because that's what you really I've never are. heard of this before but this is deep this is really deep. Because you think if you think about it, your fence is not really fake. It's really who you are. Like, <laughs> it's your rent stuff, but your real Instagram is your fence stuff. This is your fake Instagram. Right. This is what people, you want people to portray you as. That's tough. If you ever think about it. So your fence is a real Juwan? No. I think my... Wait, wait, no, wait, 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 wait. It's wait, wait, wait. everybody but me. That's what I'm here right now. Because I just started mine, so I'm still trying to, <laughs> well, still trying to find mine. Still trying to be real. Okay. Still trying to find my way. Okay, that makes sense. But going back into like, you know, how people aren't their true selves unless they feel like they're behind a mirror, like they can't be seen. I feel like a lot of times people aren't their true selves when they meet somebody new for the first time. Not even like talking about relationships or like anything like intimate. Like if you meet a new crowd of people, like you're going to automatically feel like you have to like act a certain way for that group of people to accept you. That's true. Some people. Is it wrong though? Like you feel like that's a corny move or you feel like that's just like a natural like tendency? I feel like it's human nature to want to be accepted by other people. Like if you think about it, some everybody wants to be a part of something. True. No matter what it is, a fraternity, a church, a friend mm-hmm. group, a sport, a friend group. Like no matter what it is, you want to be a part of something. Right. Like you want to feel like you belong to something. I'm not gonna lie. I said the football team back in seventh grade, so I can get girls. Did it work? Did it, it work? Didn't work? I didn't know oh. that you had to play and get girls in order to, I mean, play and be on the football team in order to get girls. I thought it was just one. You just wanted to be on the football team? I didn't want to be on the football team. I thought the girls were going to come, but the girls never came. Did, you stick, did you, uh, stick it through? I stuck it through, bro. Like, Lacey got me right. I ain't going to lie. <laughs> bro, I didn't want to make sure you got something out of it. Bro, Lacey made a man out of me, bro. I ain't going to lie. Hardwood. <laughs> Hardwood, bro. Lacey, we did nothing but run hitting drills every practice, bro. I couldn't do that. Sheesh. We couldn't run no plays, but we could hit, though. I promise you. <laughs> but now, just going back to that, like, how I always feel about people not being their true selves. Like, I know a lot of people expect us to be funny off rip whenever they see us. Nah, I just feel like, I, I, like, first of all, it's a matter of being comfortable with who you're with. Yeah. And so I feel like, even with that, like, you gotta know your crowds. I don't even know about y'all boys. Do y'all feel more comfortable, like, going into a crowd of black people or white people that you don't know? So that, that you don't know? That yeah, you that don't you don't know. know. Do you feel more comfortable Ooh. going into black people or white people? Black people. Why? Because they're black? Yep. I, I might say white people. I, yeah, I don't know, bro. You say you feel more comfortable with white yeah. people that, that you, don't, you don't, know. don't know? Yes. Based on USC, yeah. Because black people, like I said, black people have a tendency yeah. to tear each other down. Yep. So, like, if you go into, like, a new... Who is this nigga? Like, yeah. why you look at that? What are you doing? Like, fuck, nigga, what the fuck Who are you? Are you? Like, like, well, white people are like, hey, guys. Yeah. <laughs> That's a problem, though. That's the problem. That's the I feel more But it's also real like you, feel, you feel more comfortable around that you don't know now. Okay. That you don't know. white people that you don't know than a group of black people. I can see where, I can see where you're coming from, but it depends on the same. I'm saying it, it, man, it definitely because are we in same. class or are we at a kickback? No, it's a it's a it's a party. A no, party. I don't know now because you are gonna feel more comfortable at a party with a bunch of black people that you don't know. Are you gonna talk to black people though? Are you just gonna like feel comfortable being around? Them? You just no, just you will be feel comfortable being around. Them. That's it. That's true. I guess. Yeah, I can really you feel that. So how do y'all feel about people that like? What do y'all do when people like aren't? Like when they meet you, Juwan, you're like, oh, Juwan, I thought you were so funny, like, but you're not. <laughs> it depends on where I'm at. Because, like, if I'm in a. Like if I'm with cool. other people, if I'm with. Net, like, uh, like, if I'm with y'all or my LBs and I already feel comfortable, mm-hmm. and then they come into the environment, they're going to meet the 
regular me because I'm already comfortable. But if I'm not comfortable, like if I don't know nobody, like I done got that for they're like, Joy, you kinda quiet, like I thought you were gonna be funny. Like you're funny on Twitter, but you're not I funny now. And I was like, oh hey. Like I don't really feel comfortable with you yet. I don't know I don't know none of y'all. Yeah. So how can I be like naturally like goofy and stuff, but I don't know nobody? I thought people think it's like an on and off switch. Yeah. Like you just like control it. But I don't think it's that intimate or that deep. Yeah, it's not that deep. How y'all boys get to be who y'all are, like Rashawn Kawan? Like, I'm pretty sure that y'all are like a wide known name on campus. Like, how did I get to this point? Yeah. <laughs> this is definitely not Cap. Y'all boys are probably <laughs> top two. Like, Every time I get on the phone with somebody, they'll be like, Where's Rashawn? Where's Juwan? Yeah, well, I'm chilling. How are you? I'm, I'm doing yeah, only if they do be at the house. It's not, it's got to be at the bed all day. <laughs> like, right. Juwan, during the school semester? Juwan nah, the school, school semester, I don't be here. Absolutely. Every yeah, time I come to Columbia and I don't see one at all, yeah, I'll be gone. Out. I probably see one at eight o'clock in the morning. And I don't see him until like it's eight o'clock. It's at night. I'll be out the whole day. But how did I get to that point for real? I'm, I'm trying to like, like, be cool like y'all was for real. <laughs> I mean, Juan got to really answer that question. This no, man, that's you. Man famous. I don't really. I feel like if Juan's famous, then you definitely have the ground famous, bro. Like, I think people just. Yeah, I feel like I'm the ground famous. Yeah, like, <laughs> like people just know C-list celebrity. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, you just gotta accept your role, bro. That's it, bro. Right. Nah. That's who it is. I mean, yeah, you. I think you can ask that question. You the one that got you got the fame. Do I? Everybody always come to me and they're like, "Oh my God, you're Jawan's brother." Like, oh. That's what they call you. Absolutely. <laughs> Who call you that? Everybody. Hey, yeah, you're Jawan's brother. Especially well, mainly white people. White people that I don't know, but like, oh my God. But that's how I got started at USC because I lived in a dorm with mostly white people, so I didn't really know a lot of African Americans. Oh yeah, you did get your first and then we yeah. Oh, yeah. I was like, that's another reason why they call they probably oh you doing because they probably knew me the first year before you got here. Right. Which is different too, because like in high school nobody called us by our name. It was twin, twin, twin. So when yeah, I came yeah, to So when I came to USC, people start calling me hey, Jawan. Yeah. I just never like I was like, oh my lord, I just feel like I have so much power. That's what I said. If you if you know a tw- I'm a, whoever's listening. Yeah, if you know twin, if you know twins, twin. don't call them twins. Why? We don't like that. We don't like that. I think I called Sean and Juan twins one day. Sean's like, what are you talking about? Yeah, I think I said, I said that in the chat, too. You're like, Eric, why are you talking about I think he texted me on the side. It's like we don't have our own power. Like, right. You got power in your name. It's like, hey, so, twin. I was trying to address both of y'all. Anyway. Yeah, instead of saying Juwan or Sean, we just said twin to make it easy on us. I get it. See, that's a problem. <laughs> <laughs> Nobody said it would be easier. It should be easier. <laughs> Nothing be easier life. It's just like knowing, it's just like knowing a, a whole other person. It's right. just like, they're two different people. So it's just like. So what if I would call y'all the clams? Yeah, y'all would call that. That would be. But it's not specifying which McClam is it. I'll put an S in there. But it's not specifying if it's Juwan or Rashawn. That's, that's what the S is. I mean, that gets done is still using our name. Yeah. But you have to understand, like, I guess especially in high school, like, everybody got their own name but us. We didn't have our own name. I, I wouldn't necessarily say that everybody had it. No. Like people, that, people that didn't know our name, or they didn't know, people knew it was Rashawn and Juwan. A lot of people didn't know which one was Rashawn and which one Yeah, that was the thing. That was the thing. <laughs> but I feel like us, I don't know. So they would just say twin to not get get it wrong. Like they didn't yeah, know which one was. It's a safe option. But, but I feel like So I can understand that. But mostly we never got called Juwan, unless we were in separate classrooms. If you think about it, everybody called us twin, and then in ROTC, we had nicknames. Yeah, November, November and December. Where did that come from? I never knew. Because he said, I think, no, my last name with an N, Jawan. I thought that's what he said. Me. My first name with an N. <laughs> I was like, Look, I was that What's my last name? <laughs> <laughs> my first name with an N, your last name. Yeah, it was just, he was just based off the, the first letter. I mean, the last, last letter of our first letter. And just, then, just Commander Harmon doing yeah. something. <laughs> that's really all it was. That shit stuck. Yeah, it's it really did. Everybody started coming through. That was your names in my phone for a while, too. Yeah, I don't know what you had going on. <laughs> Eric was, was really on some wild shit back in the day, bro. But I remember, oh. well, matter of fact, <laughs> this is perfect. So <laughs> there was a time in high school, bro. We ain't gonna name no names. We ain't gonna right. name no names. I had a little shorty. I had a little shorty. Way back, way back. Way back, way back then. This nigga Eric was trying to use my shorty. <laughs> I'm going to stop. Bro, I'm so, no, I'm going to go ahead. Hold on, But let's go back. Remember when I said me and Eric like first started rocking in yeah. middle school? Right. In seventh going. grade. Yeah. So when we get to high school, I would think like this, he would be the last one to try to, to do that. Yeah. He was the first. He was, mm. he was the first one. Please, the first. Tell us, please keep talking. Tell the story, bro. Come on. Bro, that's, that's it. <laughs> <laughs> that's the story. And I'm about to confront you about it. And then, 
That was it. And what I told you. You were just like. No, no, no. Matter of fact, no, you're going to make me sound like you going to make me I'm going to tell you. Bro, we were talking and I told you that. First of all, she didn't even tell me that y'all were talking. Mm. Didn't even know. Because you didn't even show it. I think we all had the same class. And you done, y'all didn't look like it. She didn't have the ball to tell me. And so when you said something to me, I was like, okay, she had stopped talking to me. So I guess it makes sense. Why? Bro, hold on. So. When you just talk to somebody, you just yell out in the class. <laughs> and you're going to Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, that's, that's what you do. That's what you do. Y'all we boy, talking. Y'all boys know how y'all was Me and her. <laughs> Tell us. <laughs> talking like, you no, like, like, what? Nigga, this is high school, bro. But you, you not, bro. You know how you got down in high school, bro. Oh, what are you talking about, Eric? Hey, hey, I'm just telling you what you know already. How I got down in high school. Bro, I remember the Marvel City bus ride, bro. Oh, my God. Yeah. <laughs> the RCC bus rides. Bus rides. So, you, so let me. Well, so, so you thought it was okay for you to talk to his girl? That's what. No, 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 no. I didn't know that was his girl. That's what I'm getting. After at. you found out, what did you? No, 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 no. Eric knew. Come on, Sean. Are you serious? We had a conversation about it after the fact. We yeah, we had a conversation about it after the fact. And I told you before the fact. I didn't know that y'all talked. And I told you, you cap. <laughs> <laughs> you just gonna sit and lie to the people in this room? I, so I didn't tell you that. I was like, "Bro, come on, bro. You knew, you knew I was." First of all, when this "quote unquote" talking was happening, yeah, I'm pretty sure that y'all weren't even talking. And if y'all were talking, she didn't tell me y'all were. So mm. you get mad. So at the because wrong she person? didn't tell you, that means they weren't. That, talking. That's what that's what it sounded like. But you get, you was mad at the wrong person though. How? No, 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 no. You should have mad at just Shawty. No, 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 no. Yeah, listen, listen, listen. Because what she's doing, she's turning us against each other. That's what she's doing. <laughs> See, you got you ain't got the wrong person. Here, listen. This is this is definitely how it happened. We had a conversation. I said, Eric, what you doing? <laughs> he was yeah, like, he's like, oh, bro, that, like, that's you? I said, yeah, nigga. <laughs> and he was like, oh, bro, my bad. I didn't know. I said, Eric, yes, you did. Then something, ha- then something happened later. Yeah. Eric tried to talk to her again. <laughs> bro, you're capping. You're it was, capping. It was, you're it was, capping, a, you're it was right. a second incident. Bro, you're capping. Right it was a second incident that pissed me off. And I was like, bro, here, you serious, bro? We told this story before. You didn't gonna sit here and literally change the words. <laughs> Aaron, so it wasn't the second incident. No, there was no second incident. Okay, so when we when when I do you remember? I remember when, when we, I, talked, we talked right outside the locker room, bro. That football, that's right. Football weights, bro. It was down that hallway. I was like, hey, bro. We had a conversation. I told you where I stood, and that was it. So nothing else happened after that. No, nah, bro. We just make this. I don't know. I don't know what you're doing this for the people. I don't know what y'all boys had going on. Raise the ratings. What you mean, y'all boys? That's really Eric. That was the yeah, that's really, that's really, that's really, 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 what it was. It was Eric Nashron. It was really both of y'all. Mm-hmm. Really, okay. really, it was all of us. Right, I hated the pity stuff. Yeah. Really, it was honestly all of us. Hey, I think you had beef with everybody in the way to eight, bro. Like, why is that? Why are you always a problem? Why are you always the person that starts to beef with everybody? First of all, first of all, first of all. As you can see with Sean's case, an outside force came in and tried to divide the black man's friendship. <laughs> <laughs> they, tried, they tried to divide us. Do you see that? That's how it happens. That's really how it happens, bro. We and bro. look at her now. Okay. Jeez. Okay. 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 Right. Seriously, we did not say any names. Right. So we good. We good. We, we didn't say no names. We straight. We just had to be honest. Hey, did you forgive him? Oh, Sean, did you forgive him? He didn't even get mad at her. He got mad. He got told him. <laughs> but you his boy, though. Like you that's your boy. You right. supposed to know this. Like, bro, Shorty's coming up. As your nigga, you should have known that I would have did that while y'all were talking if I knew that. Right. Okay. This, okay. Let's get an understanding about this. This was pre me understanding that she was BSing. You gotta, you gotta understand that. Can you say that one more time in the microphone so people can hear that? I'm not gonna say it no more. <laughs> <laughs> this was before that. So after that, after this happened, you know, I realized she, you know, she, she was probably trying to, you know, Trying to play a player. No, don't whisper that. Hey, what's wrong? I'm just saying what happened. Well, just keep saying it with your chest. I'm just saying. I'm just saying what happened. Yeah, she ain't tried. It's not. She did. Hey, who went enough? My God, we <laughs> are. We did. Toast to black man. <laughs> but now, just going back to forgiveness though. Like, have do y'all find like a hard time forgiving people? Uh, yeah. Nah. No, I can forgive you, but I ain't gonna forget. Wow. Can you truly forgive someone if you Please. don't forgive? Yeah, forgiveness and. Forgiveness and well, forget turns into remember over time. So, but we gotta realize forgiveness is not tied to to what we forget or what we remember. Mm-hmm. Two different things. You can forgive somebody and still remember what they did to you. Right. I can. I forgive you, but I'm not gonna be stupid enough to let you do it again. I, I didn't forget. Stupid. I never let you get the chance. You know what I'm saying? So like. Okay, so this scenario. So this one, my pastor told me in church one day. He said, "Come that, on, pastor. Come on." <laughs> my my pastor pretty much gave a scenario like about forgiveness and forgiveness. So forgiveness, forgiveness and forgetfulness. 
My bad. He's straight to the ground. That's the Holy Ghost. Uh, yeah, this probably is a Holy Ghost by the speech. A little boy on that Andre. That's what it is. Nah, for real. But, um, so basically, if you, if Sean and Eric, if you lend Eric $50 mm-hmm. and Eric never pays you back, and you lend him $50 like three more times and never pays you back, the fourth time you lend him $50, or you refuse to lend him $50, mm-hmm. and you don't lend it to him, and you be like, bro, I'm not going to lend you $50. You're like, bro, I thought you forgave me for the other three times that you didn't lend me $50. Did you really forgive him if you're not gonna let him get it yeah. before time? I forgave you. No, you didn't. But, but you didn't forget the 150 that you never gave back. Is that what you're trying to say? What I'm trying to say is, is that <laughs> a lot of times we tie it to each other. It's not. I don't think they're separate entities. I feel. Wow. Like I can forgive you, but I'm not gonna forget what you did. But if you know, like, I'm, if you know, I'm good for it. Then yeah. Why would you? I, you're not good for it. You <laughs> didn't give me but the money back I, the last three times. But since you didn't say anything, I'm guessing. I'm like the idea is that okay, you forgave me for it, so that we're on. Yeah, no, 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 the no, clean no, slate. No. That's what I'm trying to get at. Like, no, if you no, no, really no. forgave him, y'all got a clean slate. No, 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 no. That means I have a chance to make a mistake. You're taking that away from me. Right? Yeah, you're not giving a chance to rectify himself. Yes, I am. Wow. I gave you three chances. <laughs> no, the best. I gave best. you three chances. I feel like you can have forgiveness if you're holding that on to somebody. Yeah. yeah. No, 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 no. And this is, and this is, I'm gonna say it again because <laughs> I think you're missing it. They're not tied to each other. I can forgive you. Forgive. I'm just forgiving you for what you did. I forgive you. Do I forget? No. I know. I remember what you did. You didn't give me the money back. Right. But I'm saying, like, so why are you not gonna give it to me again? If I need it again, and you, you just not gonna give it to me? Because at that point, I'm shooting myself in the foot. <laughs> right. That's true. <laughs> you're hitting yourself. How, yeah. How do you lose by helping someone? Isn't that what you're supposed to do? And the Bible says, "Give and it shall come back." Because apparently, you're trying to help yourself. Shaking together, everyone else. What wow. are you saying? Say that again. Both of us, or are you? Yeah, well, y'all, 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 y'all got a scripture. I want to yeah. open stuff the scripture. And it shall come back to you. Press down, shake together, and run it over. That's what it say. And That's you had a fourth chance to do that, and right now you just really you're not gonna do it. You gonna spit in God's face right now? That's what I'm hearing. But no, you're spitting on no. His face because you keep receiving money. Yeah, you're not putting. You're doing the same. You're doing the same thing. What are you doing for yourself? If my brother's giving you fifty dollars every time, what are you doing for yourself that equates to fifty dollars in work? Maybe I'm just always fifty dollars short. I'm just always. Jesus, it's my circumstance. I'm gonna get through eventually, but maybe your fifty dollars is what's gonna help me get through. Maybe the fourth fifty dollars, the two hundred dollars, will get him to where he needs to go. Exactly. Well, yeah. if it does, great. Look. But you have to fight for somebody. <laughs> <laughs> nah. Like absolutely, something like I would say. Sometimes you have to pick the times you're used. <laughs> right. I was used the first three times, so somebody else can be used the next time. Right. What if you're all I got though? Eric. It just sounds like you just gonna give up. No, I'm not gonna give up. I'm going to be there for you. I'm going to be there for you. There's not money to my bank. You're going to be there to tell me no. I'll be there. Because, like because me telling you no is going to do more for you than give you the $50. It probably will. Like, me dang. telling you no is going to do more for you than give you that $50 for the fourth time. Me actually saying no, I can't do it this time. Bro. That no versus 200 bro. I don't know. Like, that, sounds like that no might help you more. That no is going to help you more. I'm telling you. That's it's going to help me find somewhere else. Somebody else to ask. That's what it's going to No, do. probably like, dang, I need to earn $50 on myself. I should keep on asking. That's what I'm saying. You're going to learn something. Okay. It's, you know not gonna, it's not going to help you find somebody to ask. It's going to help you get off your ass. Oh, shoot. shoot. That hit me in the head. Growth, <laughs> growth comes in the darkness. It definitely does. Growth <laughs> comes in the darkness. I'm telling you. I'm telling you. I can't let you grow if I keep giving you the $50. Wow. You're not growing. So I'm going to have to, at that point, you're going to have to struggle this time. Because I'm you banking on my fifty dollars right every now, time. Look, you overordered the flower. The flower's gonna die. Wow. Not saying you're gonna die, but maybe the relationship's gonna die because you keep feeling like you're giving him too much money. Wow. Because maybe you're spending the fifty dollars on drug money, so he's wow. feeding into your drug addiction. Wow. So me telling you no. <laughs> <laughs> you see how this coming around? Full circle. Full circle. You see that? That's why I said forget. Hey, are you listening? For that's why right. I'm looking right at. That's why I said the two aren't tied to each other. Wow. Uh, he's put himself there. Hey, <laughs> I'm telling you. I'm glad we have this conversation on the future we know. But I'm not going to lie. Sean will be the first person to tell you no in our group. Yeah. Yeah. He tell me no. What you mean? You, you're the first person to always tell me you're, no. You're the first person to always tell people no. I'm not going to lie. Just so people can like, get a big picture. I can't even have a creative moment, bro. Like, I remember one time I told Sean, you know, I want to learn how to dance. And what would you tell me? <laughs> <laughs> this is, we got to put context in there. <laughs> <laughs> <Put context. laughs> I told Eric. Eric said you want to learn how to dance so he can dance in dance halls <laughs> and clubs. Love and dance yeah, halls. I'm saying, like, when the moment came about, I didn't want to two-step. I wanted to be able to interact and dance because who wants to just stay in the corner? I understand that. 
But what I'm what I was trying to get Eric to understand is that those of you that don't know Eric, Eric is six what six five. four six five. Eric is six five. So Let's if you're going to be dancing in the in the club, yeah, all attention is going to be on you. Yeah, <laughs> you're already talking. So if you mess them up, people will be laughing at you. Like, <laughs> hopefully, like I'm probably going to be there with you, nigga. <laughs> not even laughing at me. Like, like <laughs> so. To cancel all that from happening, I'm just gonna say I don't think you should do that. <laughs> but you just not trying to vibe, just have a good time. Like, why it gotta be like a performance? Absolutely, I'm trying to vibe and have a good time. But I'm not trying to get embarrassed at a dance. That's what I'm saying. Too. Like, it becomes it becomes a performance <laughs> with your height. Because this is what's gonna happen. You're gonna get defensive. You're gonna have to fight. Shawn gonna have to fight for That's you. That's what I'm and saying. Now, like, now we all fight. Now we now we outside. Bloody up. <laughs> They gotta go home. Oh, because he can't dance. Oh, you can't dance. You can't dance. And I told you not to dance in the first place. That blew me up. What kind of dancing are we doing? Why are we bleeding from fighting? What kind of dancing is we That's not the beginning of the test, bro. Oh, that's what I'm saying, bro. Well, you know, I mean, but Sean does tell us no when we need to be told no sometimes. Not all the time, but Sean really tells us no, but does give any reason. Yeah, he that's, that's a lot of He be saying no when we think the reason going to come to us. Like, yeah. yeah, you should already know. And it's like... And Sean has a thing where like make people feel stupid. Like, he be like, "Why would you do that?" Yeah, and you <laughs> saw these last couple minutes. No, it's not making you feel stupid. He's doing it right now. Watch, go ahead. It's the way you wear your stuff. Yeah. What do you mean? See? What do you mean the way I wear my stuff? Bro, you trying to make it seem like we're missing the point? Yeah. We're trying, yeah. bro. You, you. This is what Sean does. Sean will get. Well, Sean will repeat what you said in a sarcastic way, <laughs> and yeah. he'll get loud with you and get everybody else's attention in the room. So everybody get your laugh. And now you look stupid. <laughs> Bro, Sean has done that. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? Eric basically said he was going to dance in the club. <laughs> he know he's too tall. Like, I, because I, at that point, I want you to see that I'm, it's just not, I'm just not saying this because I'm saying it. But the way you're repeating it is what bias, and that's all people are going to hear. Like, yeah, you know what? Maybe he is too tall. It's in the rocking tone. You don't even let people make that decision by themselves that, oh, he's too tall. You just go ahead and put it out there. Eric wants to dance, but he's tall. Like, that doesn't give people a lot of work. Look, look, look. There's probably a lot of tall people that dance <laughs> that are great dancers. I'm just saying, if you're just starting out, <laughs> like, and I know how you are, like Eric, like Eric was going to really dance somewhere, like really dance. Then if he wasn't good, somebody laughing at him, make you mad. So I'm gonna be like, bro, like, I'm just saying, like, you can learn how to dance, but let's let's sit on it for a while. So. <laughs> let's practice for you. Know what I mean? So what do I quote unquote perform at before I get to the club? I just, I just come here with y'all. You told you dancing here earlier. You don't want to. I mean, I'm just saying. Like, I was at the shrine and the whole no guy. Just dance. dance at the crib and stuff. You know what I mean? So. Right, go super casual vibe with y'all. But Eric really is the one that really be having like, the most like ideas and stuff. Like Eric is really the most creative. But all your yeah. ideas don't be good though. I'm, I'm not gonna lie. Oh yeah, but it's good to be creative. I feel like the way I throw out my ideas, like the quantity, the yeah, the quantity of it, it really outdoes on that one. So. But having a bunch of bad ideas doesn't mean that one's going to be good. Like you look at it like <laughs> one of them is going to be a good idea, but that's not the same thing. Though. Well, that's how you feel. <laughs> <laughs> what about Juan? Juan got great ideas. Juan be having good ideas. He's going to be talking to us enough. Like yeah. I already told you how hard it is enough to get get up with Juan like, on a day to day basis. But I Juan got, be having gems. I got when I come up here, I got to like put into his nose like, hey Juan, I'm gonna be up here. Um, <laughs> During this day, if you y'all can, laughing at Eric Doobie Doo, if you can make it simple, he's like, hey Juan, I didn't do that before, bro. Well, you got some big plans coming up. Are you supposed to be going to LSU for grad school? I sure is. Oh, How you feel about that? Well, I don't know if we're we gonna be there or here or live, but not nah, fast. Either way, I'm excited. So, I mean, I just feel like everybody just fits their role enough in this group, and I feel like I'm just like, you know, I just bring everything together on the group that keeps us together. That's true. I'll say that. Sean, he's the glue. I think that's a pretty tape. Y'all boys don't think I'm the glue? You're definitely not the glue. So what am I? You're, you're, you're a problem. Oh, problem. <laughs> <laughs> uh, problem. <laughs> I'm just kidding. 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 But now, Eric, you, uh, you know how you are, bro. Like, you know, <laughs> Eric, you know what I'm talking about, bro. You had your share, fair share of problems with us and outside of us. You've yet to say anything good about me. <laughs> yeah. You said you have a good idea. Eric, you're, you're a good basketball player. Thanks. But Sean thinks you, only, you think you're only the best player. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, I think you do. I think Sean's straight too. You think he's just straight? Bro, y'all both straight, bro. Like, y'all he both just, he just talking right now. He's just, he just trying to say something right now. I am a lot, bro. Last time we tried to hoop, Eric got scared, man. Eric, can I get scared? Yo, come on, bro. It was pitch black. 
you decided to stop talking. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't choose the time. Yeah, I said, let's go out the you next day. Talking. I said, we can go out the next day. And that ain't never happened. But what did you tell Sean? I think what you told Sean was like, like, you said Sean over there. You said you never did anything memorable. No, I said I couldn't remember anything. That's what That's it was. That's the same thing. No, I'm saying, no. What I'm saying is that it might be there. I just can't remember it. Versus me saying so that. Versus, versus me saying that's cap. That's versus what I'm, me what saying, I'm saying is what that statement you made is cap. That's what we were talking okay, about. Okay, well tell me what I'm supposed to remember. But don't worry about it. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> hey, I'm not gonna lie, but you, 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 you'll get shot as credit, bro. Bruh. We've already we've had this conversation many times. And it's just the same. I try. Well, I'm not gonna lie. I don't yeah. think you was really happy for me when I made the basketball team, bro. What? And sophomores. No, bro, that's not the case. But they are really gonna y'all gonna really hate me this episode, bro. They gonna be like, who is this? Eric, yeah. Eric, oh my god, get him out the group. Right. <laughs> Man, that's how great Drake, where you broke my heart early on. Jesus. Sheesh. I only broke it so we come back stronger. And here you are, five black men, every single one of y'all. I did all y'all dirty, but y'all came back stronger. Because of this sound like you the snake though. It sounded like you're the snake, bro. Hey, you need to encounter it first. If we ever blow up, bro, I feel like everyone wanna switch up on us first. Have. Absolutely. <laughs> Absolutely. I think, I think it'd be Sean, bro. I think it'd be Sean. Not me. No, you're not. You didn't switch on us before, bro. Bro, but that's different. I don't know, bro. How's that different? How's that different? Bro. <laughs> Come on, man. You had a real air back then a couple times, bro. Y'all know, know I, I had a situation going on, bro. So just had a situation. If we try to tell you about something, you didn't listen. Bro. You see what women make you do? <sighs> just a little more. The wrong woman. Ah, that's true. You can't say women. Yep. But I love my black woman. Retweet. Yeah. Retweet. Retweet what was <laughs> <laughs> So I mean, what do y'all boys see ourselves like five years from now, like doing this podcast? Like, what do you see the podcast growing from here? You know, there's a lot of com- I ain't gonna say a lot of competition, but a lot of people are like you gonna start the podcast wave also. Podcast is the wave of the future, man. Honestly, like it ain't gonna be like nobody will be listening to radio in like ten years. I feel like it's just, definitely not. I feel like yeah. podcasting is kind of just anybody can do it. It's just like and people. People like to listen to and hear people's perspectives on certain things. Especially like people that they don't normally get to hear have a conversation with. Mm-hmm. So That's why I actually told her like like people ask me like how do y'all find topics to like talk about on a day basis? I'm like, bro, we usually just get together and talk about we broadcast the conversation we already have on a day to day basis. You know what I mean? Absolutely. So yeah. what would you what would you recommend, like not recommend, but like how would we stay relevant like in the new couple of like years? You just gotta stay consistent, man. Honestly, mm-hmm. that like we can have like, and this is for anybody that's doing anything. Honestly, podcasting, if you making music, mm-hmm. if you making beats, like whatever, whatever you whatever you're doing, if you if you're doing hair, whatever you're doing, you just gotta stay consistent, man. I promise you, the, the, the long term goal will be better if you stay consistent at it more than you do anything. And I, I say, oh, you go ahead. Oh, well, I think the best thing you can do is just. Uh, be yourself. I feel like people want to listen because they already know who you are. So you switching up and putting yourself on a platform just to be heard saying things that you can read or see anywhere else. Like nobody wants to listen to that. It's your genuine perspective on things that people find relatable. And I feel like, you know, like you said, for everybody else that's trying to do the same thing that we're doing or whatever industry you're in, uh, make sure you have that touch of individualism or your personality. Let it shine through all your words. You know what I'm saying? That's how people really see the authentic and genuine you. I feel that. I think that if I was to give like a two my two cents on it, I just feel like just know where you're not good at. Like you don't have to do a podcast. Mm-hmm. You don't have to like you know do what everybody else is doing. Like whatever you're good at, whether it be selling shoes, talking about music, like whatever like you're good at, just hone in on that, and you get audience. Yeah, I feel like what Sean said, being consistent. You gonna naturally adapt to like because like how everything will be changing. Like we're not gonna do the podcast the same way we're doing it right now. But if you being consistent, you are gonna adapt anyway because you're gonna have to adapt to be consistent. Fact. A lot of people think that, bro, we were like the pioneers of change, bro. A lot of people feel like, you know, we did a whole 180. Sheesh. I mean, but if you don't stay consistent, it becomes forgotten. Yeah. They're going to forgotten. Only the real is going to last. I'm telling you. Man, it's going to be crazy, bro. We all move out, bro. Like, it's going to be wild. Like, when Harper Hotel finally closes down, bro. I feel like they have to retire this apartment, bro. They, they really need to retire, <laughs> honestly. They need to. Bro, they, we don't have so many functions up in here, bro. More to come, though. More to come. Yep. We might have to do one more. Speaking of things to come, that cookout. Uh, when we said it's going to be close? Can't, can't release the date yet. Can't release Summertime, the date yet. stay ready. 
But if you said the last one, just imagine that and a whole lot better. Yes, sir. But, you know, if I was to give, you know, any closing advice, y'all got to put a lot of this in there. This is called a full one right here. A lot of people don't know about that called a full one. But, um, there's your boy Q said, I don't have any like anywhere. I just want to see if we have more action music songs. That shit was a good stuff. Came in a good time, didn't it? Perfect. Sounds good. This is your boy Q-Sad signing off. Appreciate y'all for listening to us a thousand times over. Really appreciate the feedback y'all been giving us. Um, stay in touch with us on social media. Leave us any feedback that we need. And um, y'all stay blessed. Peace, love, and happiness. And appreciate y'all, man. For real, for real. Appreciate y'all, for real. Y'all the reason we still doing this. And honestly, if people wouldn't tell us that we're doing good at it, I don't know if we would still have the drive to continue like, yeah. doing it as we is. So I appreciate that, man. So, Ray Rashawn, we up. People go, y'all stay blessed up and prayed up. Yes, sir. It's way deep. Um, again, we really appreciate y'all. Like you said, a thousand times over. And I'm just wishing more life, more love, and more happiness to y'all. Peace.